I was asked to work with a group of clinical dietitians and a gastroenterologist um, to devise a study or to design a study in which we could present a nutrition intervention. And so that's how really this began. And uh, Kathleen Best, one of our dietitians, had the concept that she really wanted to um, look at probiotic treatment um, or perhaps the prevention of antibiotic-associated diarrhea, because antibiotic-associated diarrhea is a huge problem in our hospitals, as is C. diff, if you're familiar with that. Um, this is a real thing that keeps the patients in the hospital longer, and uh, so if we can do anything to prevent this, it would be a huge financial and administrative uh, benefit to our patients. And we decided, we made the executive decision that we, we would try and prevent this antibiotic-associated diarrhea. But then we had the big decision of what probiotic to use. And, um, you know, we, as I said, really didn't have any um, bias toward any one particular probiotic. So we started combing through the literature and creating large tables of all the different probiotics and what the studies or the evidence was um, to show effectiveness for the pro different probiotics. And um, I will tell you that we were very dismayed because there was not a lot of literature. And so, um, as I said, this was about three years ago that we began this process. And, we, and, and the studies would be very ambiguous about whether or not they tell you what kind of strain was in their mixture, like you were discussing a mixture that you used. They wouldn't tell us what strains were in there. They didn't always state um, the, the dose of the strains, and so we had a hard time really making an evidence-based decision. The big concerns that our physician had and that we had is that in a hospital, you have very nutritionally compromised patients, and so we were very concerned about the, con the, the chance or the um, opportunity for bacterial translocation if you're introducing a live bacteria. We were very worried about certain patients that might be immunocompromised. So w there was some key literature that really led us to l -ruteride. First of all, we wanted to make sure that the probiotic was going to survive the gut. And we wanted to make sure that it would be cultured in the area that would allow it to do the most good and to prevent the antibiotic-associated uh, diarrhea. And so, um, as you can see, uh, Jacobson's article really helped us feel more comfortable with the fact that l could survive passage through the GI tract and adhere to the mucosa and colonize. And they were able to show that with fecal stools. Then we wanted to say, well, hey, if we're trying to um, prevent antibiotic-associated diarrhea, our patients are going to be on antibiotics. Therefore, we need to make sure that those antibiotics aren't wiping out the probiotics that we're giving them. And so Temperman uh, had a paper that showed us it was resistant to many of the powerful antibiotics that we actually use in the U.S. on a very frequent basis, which may be different than some areas of the world. And so this paper showed uh, canamycin, tetracycline, penicillin, vanco, and that l ruteri was uh, resistant to all of them. So that gave us the confidence that it at least had a chance to be effective. Um, and then the next two papers really uh, re resolved a lot of our fears of was it safe and was it effective at least in some populations? We figured if people could give it to hospitalized children, we were pretty safe giving it to hospitalized adults. So we had some specific <coughs> aims that we were trying to achieve. We wanted to look and if l ruteri supplementation resulted in decreased antibiotic-associated diarrhea, uh, to identify any characteristics associated with those patients who were responders, you know, um, and that's something that we're still uh, thinking through. Um, to determine if the supplementation resulted in significant decrease in length of stay. And finally, to evaluate the safety and effectiveness um, and the tolerance of this supplementation in an adult care setting. So it's a randomized, double-blind, uh, placebo-controlled trial, and um, it was approved by what is our ethics committee and the Institutional Review Board at University Hospitals. As I told you, we were very conservative, so our inclusion and exclusion criteria are a little bit uh, maybe extensive, and that is partly because of uh, us being so very conservative. We wanted them to be adult. We wanted them to uh, be receiving antibiotics for not more than 96 hours prior to enrollment. So we really wanted to catch them at the beginning of their antibiotic uh, session. And we, uh, of course, had to have them sign what we call an informed consent. And so our exclusion criteria, as you see, was a whole lot longer. Patients that entered the trial either received probiotic supplementation, uh, as you can see the dose of the l ruteride, and um, or placebo. Our primary outcome was the incidence of diarrhea, yes or no. 
and um, stool consistency, we did a little bit. We looked at the uh, presence of some symptoms. We wanted to make sure that those getting probiotics were not getting symptoms, uh, any more symptoms than those not on probiotics, so that was our rationale for that. Um, so at baseline, each subject received this fantastic picture, Bristol stool scale, and they had to uh, look at the different stool pictures, and our definition of diarrhea was greater than three stools um, at the category of six or seven. Um, so the data was collected up to 28 days. If our patient, which almost all of them were, were discharged from the hospital, and that's what DC is, uh, is discharged. Um, prior to the 28th day, the subject was given a detailed packet of information on how to take the probiotic and how to kind of catalog, fill out a log indicating if they had any diarrhea. Um, then they would get phone calls um, for twice a week, reminding them and asking them if they'd had any diarrhea or any of these symptoms that we wanted to collect. Um, we, at the very end of the 28 days, they were scheduled for an appointment in which we would do kind of a count to try and see how compliant they were. Um, and then the final follow-up ca call was six weeks after initiation of the pro probiotic. And then again, we were assessing whether or not they had developed diarrhea. Um, and here's our, our big results. Um, so, and remember, um, we showed that in the probiotic group, 92% had no diarrhea. 8% had diarrhea, and in the placebo group, it was about 50-50 split, which is what you'd expect from a, a chance. So we were very pleased with this, very surprised. This was statistically significant, and in such small numbers, uh, we had not really expected to see statistical significance, so that was fantastic. Um, we wanted to make sure, though, that those two groups, those people with the probiotic and the placebo, were ha not having any different GI symptoms, and in fact, they weren't. Um, they were having almost identical uh, GI symptoms in both groups. None of these were statistically significant. And as you can see, uh, similarly with emesis, uh, uh, throwing up uh, constipation, reflux, no major differences. Um, so. Uh, our conclusion was that in this uh, placebo-controlled pilot trial, um, l ruteri twice daily for four weeks significantly decreased antibiotic-associated diarrhea among hospitalized adults, and the l ruteri was safe and well-tolerated. Obviously, larger controlled trials of l ruteri for the prevention of antibiotic-associated diarrhea are certainly warranted.